everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I got kind of a fun one I'm gonna start, which is this little GE alarm clock. I'm gonna do a restoration on it. Um, I've had this for a long time. I used to work at a repair shop. It was actually my first job after high school. I got out of high school in 96, walked into this repair shop and said, hey, I don't really have any credentials and I've never had a job before, but hire me and I'll work for minimum wage. And they said, okay. So I spent the summer working there before I went to college and made four sixty-five an hour. And this is one of those things that was just in a pile of junk and nobody wanted it. So I took it home and I've just kind of had it kicking around ever since. Uh, last I knew it worked, but you know, not great. You got to assume that, you know, tubes might not be great and capacitors are probably not good. So I don't know. I was hoping to be doing some things outside and taking you guys along for that ride, but it's almost April and we just had six inches of snow yesterday. So here I am. We're going to do a little radio project and then play outside later. So uh, I don't know how many parts this is going to be, but probably at least two. So here goes part one. Okay, well I got it apart, and here's some of the things I found. First off, it's real dirty, no surprise there. Uh, secondly, this was interesting, this piece of antenna wire, as long as I've had this, has been hanging out of the back, and I assumed it was an antenna. Imagine that. No, it was hooked in parallel across the speaker, which means I guess at some point somebody had the brilliant idea to take this tiny dinky little underpowered amp and then hook a speaker in parallel and drop the impedance in half and overstress the amplifier. Presumably. Uh, so that's interesting. Hopefully it didn't hurt anything, but like I said, it, at one point this radio did work. I remember very specifically tuning into the Sunday morning polka show. But other than that, it's your typical uh, All-American 5 radio amplifier setup, plus this little mechanical clock deal. So I'm going to start. I've made a diagram to show what different color wires go where, where the screws go, putting things in bags. Always a good idea. So I'm going to start unsoldering things and getting this cleaned up. Okay, I just blew this off with compressed air. And I took off the antenna because that was kind of delicate. It's mounted in cardboard. And I guess it's doing the job. But I am somewhat tempted to uh, make it a little more sturdy than that. But anyway, I always wondered why was this at the shop where I worked. I mean, if it was just thrown in a pile of junk, like, okay, somebody brought it in there to fix, but wouldn't they have fixed it? Well, turns out they did. They just slapped a couple of electrolytic capacitors and left the old cardboard tube on there. I don't know if they did it because they were lazy or because they wanted to maintain the original look of it. But anyway, I guess that explains it. Somebody brought it in, they fixed it, and probably called the person and gave them the total and it was probably a hundred dollars or something and they said forget it. 
So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do about this. I mean, it's probably working, but of course now this is a 22-year-old fix, so maybe they need to be replaced again. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to keep tearing it down, but there's hardly anything to this. Okay, so I'm going to remove the string for the tuner. I've never done this before, but I think I see how to do it. Okay, so that was wrapped around three times. I don't know if that matters. Okay, and I have seen this for sale from vintage radio supply houses, so I suppose I'll replace that. Okay, and that is free aside from the leads for the light bulb. Man, they did make this cheap. Got more cardboard, a little bit of gauze tape or something. Now the goal I'm after right now is to get the board out of the metal chassis here. It looks like I'm almost there. Okay, I've got all the wires unhooked. I wrote everything down, labeled it, took lots of pictures so I can get it back together the same way. Okay, I'm going to take some more pictures, label some more things. I think I'm just going to take everything off the board because there's only a dozen things on there. And then kind of clean everything up, resolder it, and just basically make it a new board. Okay, well, it's tomorrow. I've been working on this radio a little bit here and uh, got it completely torn apart. Have you ever met one of those people that overdoes everything? Well, I am certainly not one of those people. I only do the exact required amount of work. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Uh, part of the reason is because soon I'm going to be starting my Philco Predicta project, which you usually see in the background of my videos. Right over there. And I've heard that the circuit boards are junk and the traces fall off and I thought, hey, it'd be really cool if I reproduced those boards, mostly because I want one for myself, but, you know, maybe make a dozen or something and just sell them. So I thought this would be an excellent practice run. So I'm going to see if I can make one of these myself because I've made some little circuit boards, but never this large. And I'm going to see how that goes. Depending on prices, I might send out and have them made. But you know me, I've got to try everything completely DIY first. So I'll probably just try to make one because I have most of the materials I need here. But I just thought it'd be fun, mostly. Um, aside from that, I got all the capacitors out. Other than this big paper one, they are pretty close. The resistors are all fine. I think really I've got a working unit here, aside from that one capacitor. So this is going to be part two, but I've seen people where they gut these, put electrolytic capacitors inside of them, 
and close them back up so that when it's installed on the board, it looks original. Um, it's probably not that important for this because you can't really see inside of there. But just for future reference, I'd like to know how to do that. So this, again, seems like a good practice run. I'm going to call that the end of video one. And I'm going to play with that capacitor for the next video. And in the meantime, I'm going to order up some parts and decide if I'm going to make this circuit board or order some of the things I do for fun. Thanks for watching. See you next time.